Hey guys, I'm David Demuzio, And I'm Steve Cook. Welcome to Hair Loss Hope. And today we're gonna to talk about seven reasons that your hair transplant will fail. No one's hair transplant has to fail. These days with the medicine that we have, with the skill of the top surgeons in the world and all of the knowledge that we have, there should be no one really that needs to go bald. But unfortunately, a lot of hair transplants still fail. You'll see it all over. The other day I was in the gym, a guy came up to me and he had just gotten a hair transplant overseas, in Turkey actually, and he had this moth-eaten look in the back of his head. And this can happen from any bad surgeon anywhere in the world. He had this FUE and it looked really bad. Joe Rogan has talked about how his hair transplant fails. A friend of mine, or not friend, who was like working with me, a uh, construction guy came up to the other day and he showed me his hair transplant and how it had failed and he'd not used medication. So a lot of hair transplants still fail. Now, the first reason that your hair transplant will fail is that you have poor donor hair. The donor hair is the hair that comes from the back of our heads that you'll see on older guys with significant hair loss. Still that one little ring, like if you're to look at a James Taylor right now, he's got that one little ring around the side of his head that still has hair. And that is where we want to take the hair from. If your donor hair is of poor quality and it's very thin and wispy and sort of on its way out as well, and it's not very strong, well then your hair transplant is also gonna look thin and wispy and could even potentially die on the way to the top of your head and it's not going to be a very good result. The second reason your hair transplant plant can fail is because you go to the wrong doctor and the wrong clinic. So we talked about this in many of the videos. You wanna find a board certified doctor that has been doing this for a number of years. I like to use maybe five or seven minimal that has a website of his work, not anyone else's, that you see enough of his videos where you can look at the spacing and you can freeze the screen and you can see his work. You wanna have a consultation with that doctor who either sees your photos, video, or sees you in person and, and evaluates you as a optimal candidate or not. If you're seeing someone that's not a full-time doctor that's not board certified, I don't even like to say that they're bad people. I just don't think they know what they're doing. So your hair transplant will fail if you're misdiagnosed, if they determine that you have good quality donor hair and you don't, if you way too bald for FUE and they have no idea that they shouldn't be doing your surgery. So the, the second number two reason is it will fail unless you see someone, an expert that is board certified and does this full time. Good thing to think about is if you walk into a clinic and they're about to, they say, hey, next Tuesday, we've got an opening, we'll do your hair transplant. Especially if you're not in any preventative hair loss medication and you haven't been already for at least six months, then that's probably a good reason to walk out the door and to not get your hair transplant done at that clinic. The number three reason your hair transplant will fail is if you are a diffuse thinner. So what that means is that you have more female pattern hair loss and you're thinning all over the top of your head and the sides. Generally, that's not a good person to do a hair transplant on whether they are male or female. The only case in which sometimes you can do a hair transplant on that kind of person, and it's usually an FUE style hair transplant on a diffuse thinner, is if they have gotten on medication and their hair is actually getting better. So if their hair loss is reversing and their hair loss is getting better, then you might still be able to do a hair transplant on that kind of diffuse thinner. But if their hair is definitely getting worse, then you do not wanna get a hair transplant. The fourth reason that your hair transplant can fail is if you have false expectations. What false expectations mean is that you think that you're going to get hair that's going to look like your hair did before you lost any hair. Only about 50% of the density of your original hair can be achieved through a hair transplant. And I have guys that write me and write Steve every single week that have just gotten hair transplants done and they look amazing. To look in the mirror, to look at them, you would think that they had never lost any hair, but they're not happy. And the reason they're not happy is because their hair that's been transplanted is not as thick as the hair that is behind it. And even though it looks like it is, uh, you know, to look at them, when they run their fingers through their hair, they go, oh, it's not quite as thick. That is gonna be a failure because you're gonna walk around for the rest of your life and you're gonna look at yourself and go, no, it's not the same, this is a failure. And so it's you really have to understand 
and put your expectations at what is realistic. And realistic is that it's never going to be as thick as your original hair. The fifth reason that your hair transplant will fail is because you get the wrong surgery or the wrong technique done on you. Yeah, so there's a lot of objective pros and cons of both procedures, FUT and FUE. My advice to anyone considering a hair transplant, and they're confused by their internet research, is to go to a clinic that is board certified, an expert in hair restoration, and does both procedures. By saying that, they do FUT, FUE, for instance, top doctors that I do a lot of work with, right now it's about 60, 65% FUE, 35, 40% FUT. The market and the generations are demanding more FUE, that's for another video. What you need to do is make sure that you go to one of these doctors so you can get an honest assessment as to what procedure would work better for you, or you may be a candidate for either. I get sick and tired of hearing from patients that are going to FUE only clinics, and guess what? FUE is the only procedure you should choose, and here's why FUT is such a bad procedure. Then the same patient goes into an FUT only doctor, and guess what they say? Oh my God, you're a great candidate for FUT, and here's why you're not an FUE candidate. And then the patient's spinning around in circles and gets really confused. So it's just a tip. I think it's a really good tip. You wanna make sure that you aren't sold or you don't entertain the wrong procedure because that could be, end up being a failure. You wanna make sure that you choose the right procedure. The sixth reason that your hair transplant could fail is if it looks funny, fake, or weird. Yeah, so uh, two things that we all want in a hair transplant, besides getting our hair back. One is we want them all to grow. And number two is we don't want it to look funny or weird. We go always back to board certified, full-time hair doctors that have excellent staffs that use microscopes. The doctor, this is 50% science, 50% art. Those, that doctor's hands are gonna determine the angle and direction in a three-dimensional space and the disbursement of the grafts, the single hairs, the double hairs, three hairs, and some even four or five hair grafts. That has to do with what's called artistry. If they don't know what they're doing or they put a three haired graft and you got dark hair, light skin, and the hairline, you're in trouble. That's gonna look funny or weird. If that doctor doesn't have enough experience and knows how to use angle and direction in a three dimensional space, your hairs are gonna end up growing like, they look like they don't belong there. Imagine planting a tree that's a decent size inside of a huge field and then going another 20 yards and planting another tree and you're trying to make it look like it's a thick tree Forest. farm. <laughs> it's just not gonna look right. So it is, there's a lot of aesthetics to it. And again, this all comes down to research, but you know, if you end up being a corrective patient, that's gonna be challenging because then you have to put all those little tiny twigs and trees around the bigger ones and make it look more real and you gotta to try to change the look of the angle and direction because once these transplants are placed, they're very hard to get out. And the seventh and final reason, and maybe the most important reason, but definitely the least sexy reason that your hair transplant will fail is that you stop preventative treatments, preventative hair loss treatments and medications. So one of the most important parts, and I've learned this the hard way, parts of a hair transplant is actually taking preventative medicine if for the majority of hair transplant patients. And if you ever stop, then your hair is most likely going, almost definitely going to get worse and going to look worse. So it is very important that you have already committed in your mind before a hair transplant to use preventative treatments for the rest of your life. And I know that's a big commitment, but that's just part of it. And preferably you've already been on those preventative treatments and medications for at least six months prior to your hair transplant and that's all going very well and you're committed to that it's working for you you're going to have a much higher percentage chance 95 percentage percent chance of your hair transplant being more successful because of that so i hope this helps you if you have any experience to share with us please leave it in the comments and thank you so much for watching